Hey, what's up guys? It's Jack and today in this video, I'll be showing you my entire roadmap of how to get from complete beginner all the way to like sub 25 and even world class potentially. So all the methods that you need to know for your entire blind solving journey. Anyway, just to recap. So in the first video, I covered my not so well-known blind solving backstory and how it took me several years to get to where I am today. And in the second video, I talked about an exercise that you can use to help you find your weak spots. In the third video, I talked about an underrated tool that I don't see nearly as many people using today as they should. And yeah, be sure to watch those first because they're filled with lots of fresh tips that you want to watch before you watch this fourth video. Anyway, let's just move on. So if I had to start my blind solving journey from scratch, but I could kind of retain the knowledge of how to learn efficiently and all of that, then my progression of getting faster and back to world class would look something like this. So I think that's pretty much the same thing I had in one of my progression videos like a year ago. And yeah, it probably looks surprisingly simple given that you've probably heard of quite a few more methods than the ones I've mentioned here. And I'll briefly explain um, these three different stages essentially. So first of all, as a complete beginner method, or even if you want to get all the way to like sub one, you don't even have to look at anything else above M2 OP. And just to clarify, M2 is an edge method and OP is a corner solving method. So I think most tutorials nowadays teach old Pokemon for both, including my one from two years ago. Um, so old Pokemon for corners, that's fairly stock standard, I suppose. Very simple to learn, um, two moves set up at most, and it's very fast if you can turn fast and you can automate the process. And the reason why I chucked an M2 here instead of old pocket for edges is because while it's maybe a bit harder to learn at first, once you can get past the idea of learning special cases, then you don't have to learn it again in the future. Um, it's just like quicker, which means that you can learn audio like as soon as possible, which is key for really pushing your memory, especially at the intermediate stage. And it means you don't have to learn it again in the future. If I didn't say that already. I have a bad memory sometimes. And yeah, talking about the potential of M2OP, I did like a four-man um, 3 by 3 blindfolded relay earlier this year, and one of the guys just used just pure M2OP, 0-3 style, and he got like a 37-second solve. So you can get some ridiculous speeds with a really basic, supposedly like beginner method. However, I don't necessarily recommend le reaching the absolute limits of the M2OP method before starting to learn 3 style, because once you do that, then you've kind of hit like this massive wall and there's nothing you can really do to improve your speed by much unless you learn like hundreds and hundreds of algorithms, which can be fairly overwhelming and demotivating at the same time. And for this reason, I actually advise people to start learning three style like quite a bit earlier than they might expect. Perhaps even after just learning the basics of blind solving and getting comfortable with the fundamentals. Reason being is that perhaps when you're a beginner, you might not necessarily think that, you know, reaching sub you know, one, let alone sub 30, it might seem attainable, but you'll improve a lot quicker than you think. And if you learn earlier, let's say only like a couple of alks per day, then you can quickly, you know, gain that knowledge like over time. And that means once you learn the three style alks um, while you're improving at M2 OP gradually, then by the time you reach around just before the limits of M2, um, then you can switch over the, um, OP method for the three cell arcs for the corners. Anyway, from what you would have seen, I already covered the first two methods in the very beginning. The only other method that you see is three cell, which is the undisputed best method and the only method that anyone fast uses essentially. And there's no way to really sugarcoat the fact that you have to learn like 800 algorithms in order to um, know all the arcs for full three style. But the thing about the arcs for three cell is that they're all commutators, which are actually fairly generally pretty easy to learn and they're all for the most part intuitive and half of them are like inverses of each other which essentially means it's really only like 400 or so algorithms and if you were to approach it like little by little say you learn five algs per day including inverses with the help of a flashcard program called Anki which you might know about from the previous video in the series then you could pretty much learn all the three style algs in like around three months which isn't that bad considering the amount of algs you have to learn and the amount of work you have to put in every day. Anyway, going back to the roadmap. So what I recommend is once you've mastered the fundamentals of blind solving, just gradually learn three style algs bit by bit. And that will mean that hopefully before you reach like a massive wall with M2OP, you'll be able to learn all of the three style algs for the corners, in which case you can switch it out. 
and just like switch like in one go using the uh, UFR buffer, which is what all the fast guys nowadays use. And the reason why I recommend swapping out the corners first is because OP is just slower than M2 and do something similar for the edges. So just gradually learn the um, UF buffer algs once you get used to this method. And soon enough, you'll have all the algs in your memory and then you can just switch it out in one go and then bam, full freestyle. And the reason why there aren't any other intermediate methods that you might have heard of before, like Orozco, Ike, Turbo or whatever, is because I feel like their purpose is either to be like a three style placeholder or like a faster version of M2. So I guess first of all, M2 is like really freaking fast already. I told you that some dude got like a 37 single with M2 OP and M2 is just easier to learn. I mean, maybe if you did a Rosco at full speed, like it could be faster, but I feel like at this stage, like the main focus should be on like improving memory. That's like where like a lot of the ROI comes from. Memory as in like not just memorization, but all the aspects included in the memory stage, as well as like recall, which is like part of execution. But anyway, um, basically the fundam fundamentals. And in regards to using like a placeholder method, like I feel like it's probably better to like learn all the ALKs first before switching because um, let's say, I don't know, you're just gradually learning three style ALKs and you're just getting used to a new buffer and you're learning a new method as well, like a ROS code just to fill yourself in. And you're trying to do that all in solves. I feel like there's a bit too many things going on and I still want you to like improve your memo gradually throughout the entire process. And I feel like, yeah, if you have too many things to think about, like that's, that's just like not efficient because your brain's just bad at multitasking. That's why I've deliberately tried to isolate many different components. Um, and then kind of chuck them back together in the end. So for example, when getting from this stage to this stage, um, just working on M2OP like separately from freestyle so you can keep improving your memorization without having to like try to come up with freestyle algs so much until you've learned the entire thing, in which case I think you should switch. But um, yeah, the idea behind this methodology is to try to isolate things until you can work up to a certain left meth Sorry, isolate things until you can work up to a certain level where you can kind of make it a bit more automatic before chucking things together. Because if you put in too many things together and they're at pretty sort of low levels, then you're just gonna get overwhelmed and improve not very efficiently. But yeah, that's the gist of my recommended um, roadmap for improvement. And I'll be covering this and much, much more, including how to memorize all of the 800 or so algorithms for three style, which is the method that I use and much, much more in my upcoming mind solving masterclass so be sure to stay tuned for that because once again i haven't created anything remotely close to being as in-depth and as comprehensive as this course anyway in the next video i'll just be showing you a case study of someone who i've helped coach and helped improve at blindfolded solving but in the meantime thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video see ya